and it's the collective another episode of Inside the Underground. Today I've got someone special, he's from Kenya, that's how I found him on Instagram and stuff. Um, he's a director, so he's worked with Pasali, Lil Sims, Clay of Soul, and yeah man, do you just want to introduce yourself, let the people know? Um, thank you, great introduction. Um, yeah, I'm a filmmaker, um, creative person, I've been working long time doing many things so hopefully I can help pass on some wisdom yeah how did you get started man like how did you get into it um so I studied at Kingston Uni and I did um a course it was a new course at the time called TV design and production um and it's kind of it I did a course before that media technology which was all like just theory based and all like reading and writing stuff um, and I didn't connect to it at all so I did I failed my first year did really badly oh, and didn't want to tell my mum I failed so I heard about this new course that was coming up um, so I signed myself up quickly um, and because it was a brand new course I think they were just looking for people to come so I had this one teacher I think really good um, and she kind of course um and yeah i enjoyed that because it's mainly practical and it was just learning to do stuff um and then after that i went to try and find any job i could in um media i guess or doing i think at, at that point i just needed to work and to earn something and to do something um so i ended up um, finding running work on um, at the time, there's a show called Album Chart Show, which is like a music show. Um, yeah. Um, and then through that, I ended up getting work on like MTV and E4 Music at the time. Um, and I, yeah, I basically just found running work and then would put myself into any possible situation I could if there's a set or if there's people. Um, and yeah, in hindsight, it's probably way too kind of like eager to just yeah. do anything um but it was yeah I, I feel like i just i just needed to work um and yeah yeah so how did you like get into like working like doing music videos for like little sims or like the vfx for um slow tie like how did it come start working with like these bigger people and bigger names because i know you've been working with little sims for a while haven't you yeah, long time, long time. Um, and a lot of people I've worked with, I've, I've worked with for a while, or um, at least known for a while. Um, I guess, so when, this is the thing, so when I was, um, after I did my uni course, and when I was working as a runner, I was also learning, like, um, anything I could. So at that time as well, me and my wife, we just had a baby. Um, yeah. So it was even more, like, important just to get jobs <laughs> to do yeah, good, to find things to do um so we yeah so i was learning so i learned all my vfx stuff from youtube um and this was always at the time it was just so i could do something else or i could do so when i was a runner at this company called remedy productions they need to title sequences made and they need graphics and they need stuff so i learned how to do that yeah and then just so i could kind of like do that job do this thing um and eventually the more you're picking up and the more you're learning and the more you're doing the more um your skill set grows so kind of like unfortunate at the time that i was running i was a runner for so long like i did like three or four years being a runner oh. just like crazy but during that time i learned so much other stuff whereas if i just went in one direction i wouldn't have learned all that other things yeah so, I hear that. fortunately yeah, fortunately I managed to make enough connections um, and build my skill set enough. So by the time that I did jump and I left that company, I had um, yeah enough about me and enough kind of confidence that I could kind of like, oh, do this, um, like shoot this music video for this person, or well, shoot this. And obviously when you're starting out, everything's hella lo-fi and you're just doing what you can. Yeah, how long have you been shooting music videos for? first one I think was 2012 
That time, like, he just needed a video. I needed to. Sh- I wanted to shoot a video. Yeah. I wanted to be like, I'm a director. I can do. Fair enough. Um, I know um, you've got that thing on Channel Four coming out. Twice as good. Yeah. Uh, can I? Can, do we get any sneak peeks about that? Because I'm, I'm excited to watch that. Like, what's going on with that? Yeah. How did that start? That's. Uh, that's. Uh, so this is it's my next short film, which is. Yeah, super, super personal to me. Um, yeah. Look, he wrote it in 2019, a couple of years ago. Um, and it came out just, I had a meeting with um, uh, with somebody, David Kambangi at Film 4. It's a great big guy. Um, and then I want to start getting my foot into the door for doing drama and narrative stuff. And he told me about this um, series they got coming up, and they're looking for writers and directors um, yeah. um, to do sci-fi films about um, from they explore the future of Britain from a black perspective. Um, so I wrote a few ideas, but there's this one that stuck um, called Twice as Good, which is really it's really about that moment of that I guess every I guess wherever you're from any immigrant parent will have with their children where they're telling them they have to be twice as good yeah. make it anywhere they have to be twice as good as everyone else yeah, um, I that. but it was also about the um, the impact of that on the child as well um, that's what's really about Send it to you, I'll send it to you. Yeah, but, um, yeah, and would you say like that's your favorite project that you've worked on so far? Or like what's what's your favorite thing that you've like done? It's my most personal one, mm-hmm. definitely, in terms of like it's and this is the difference with when you're doing stuff in music or doing stuff there's commissions, you're working essentially you're working for somebody else's story. You're telling somebody else's yeah. agenda story, where it is which I love that as well. And that's a huge challenge and that's a... The, mo- um, the most, that's time a great- when, most time when you're like going to these musicians and stuff, do they already have like a vision in their heads? Or like, do you create mostly from scratch? It depends. So past Ali, he had that idea. He knew, um, he had the idea that he wanted to, I think he'd seen um, Gulliver's Travels or an image from Gulliver's Travels where it's a big uh, giant and being down. Um, so he had that idea and he wanted to set it in Coventry um, but so yeah that that was an idea where he kind of had and we just evolved it and adapted it and discussed it and then created it but then with other artists other artists would just come and be like listen I've got this track yeah what can you do but there's like your favourite ones to work on where like you have a bit more scope to you know do your thing yeah to, and I think that's why I, I like the idea of narrative and drama and written stuff where you can, yeah. you're creating from nothing, no other. So everything's coming from within. Everything's about is already there, you know. And it's yeah, really that's what I was going to ask for actually, like your um, inspirations and stuff. Like who would you like, who got you into filmmaking? Like why, like who do you look to? You know? I guess a lot of people, I mean, this, it's not because there's no one, a lot of people have, there's no one specifically. I know when I was like, when I was like 18, 19, um, I think I'd just seen City of God. Oh yeah, I love that film. Man. Yeah. And that was like one of the films I was like, wow, that's like, I want to do that. Man. That's like, I want to do that however I can. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, but then there's also other films like, um, Sweet 16 by Ken Loach, which is, I guess, a hugely real film, and that really inspired me. But it's like, oh, you can do films that aren't like huge, like Hollywood's Marvel plot twists and all of this. Yeah, it's just, just about like you and what's around. You. Is it more like external inspirations, or like is it more coming from for you from yourself? No, and that's the thing. I think I think 
for a long career, it's definitely been external. But I think over the last few, like, three to four years, I've learned how to draw from um, myself. And that's something it took a long time to learn, but it's the most important thing, I feel like. Um, and I guess it's what you said initially, like, you don't want to be working for what people will do things for. Is that ultimately, that's not what art is. I feel like if there's any lesson that anybody can learn early on in their journey is that it's do you like do what like, like listen to your own voice and amplify that and try and tell stories that are based around that yeah i mean did you ever feel like like i don't know like giving up while you're doing it i mean i know like being in this creative industry like like me personally i'm just always skin or like something's always happening you know and sometimes it's disheartening did you ever think like maybe going in another direction or were you just always sad yes yeah definitely um definitely that money was an issue for um forever <laughs> definitely i don't know if, i feel like um but in a way i didn't it, it's not like i had tons of other options it's not like i had um um someone there who was like oh here Jeremy here's another job that you can earn yeah. 100k a year and do this so it's like it's really all I had um, but at the same time I guess yeah I guess I gave up and I have done several times when things aren't working and I don't think that's a bad thing I feel like that's an important thing because you yeah, can just be on the wrong path it doesn't mean you can't be a creative it's just you're on the wrong path or you're with the wrong company or you're with the wrong production or whatever so it's important to move when those things aren't working um, but yeah I think yeah there's been many moments where I've been like I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't be broken anymore I can't yeah. like <laughs> well when to... when did you know when did you know like you can do this like not you've made it or whatever but like when did you know yeah this is this is sustainable you know like this is it like was there is there any certain videos like nah, not in that way I, I guess there's and this is the thing I've always known that I can do it I've always known that I'm capable of doing like a great film one day I'm capable of doing this great thing one day um, and although it's like a headache sometimes when, you, when it's like that's so far in the distance or so far I mean, yeah. um, I've never been like I won't do it um, but I think, I mean, do you know what? The last year has been rewarding in a sense of like, people started hearing me from my voice instead. Yeah. And that's validating in a way. Like it, it makes you, it validates the reason why you do it, I guess. And it validates that, oh, okay, cool, this is, there is a journey here, and it's, there is a purpose to this, there's a value of this, you know, so it's, um, whereas before I kept, I always thought that you have to look at the people that are making these films you want to make and become them. Yeah. I, I guess but for the last year it's been rewarding that people have seen my work for stuff that I've created purely from me and being like, okay, cool, that matters. Um, so I guess that's that's been the uh, youth thing. Um, is there anyone like you would love to work with in the industry right now? Yeah, I mean, tons of people, not one specific person. So I guess it always comes down to the vibe that you catch up someone. So mm. sometimes you can think, oh, I'd love to work with Kanye. And then yeah. you might meet and just not catch up by at all <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I do feel like I do feel like Kanye's a dickhead still but yeah you know what I mean <laughs> I, I, I love I love him he's my favourite artist but like in person yeah. absolutely but I feel like in the same way that's what makes him great it's like, yeah you know, exactly it's that e I feel like it's that ego and just know it. he knows totally. what he can do isn't it totally and it's not you're not you're not um, and I appreciate I admire that at least that you're not like yeah. he's not he's not limited to other people's perceptions in a way but um, yeah. the same way I don't I don't ever want to become that person that's like so far removed from reality criticism um, yeah. yeah 
Um, I was, I was, but I was gonna ask like, because Lil Sims is like one of my favorite artists, and like I'm constantly oh, banging her out at uni. Okay. Everybody, like, can you talk to me about like your friendship and your like working relationship with her and stuff? Yeah, I mean that's like my sister. Like, in a lot of ways, we just we worked together for maybe like nine years or so now. Um, so I think both at the time when but you've watched her like blow up, haven't you? Yeah. So when when yeah, totally. Um, but it's never been a surprise. I think when uh, when we first met, we both we were both at the very beginnings of our careers. Um, so she was just starting, kind of like getting out there with music. I had just decided I was gonna commit to direct directing. Um, so we both at that point, and we, I think we both always knew that both of us would get to this point where, like, um, we're doing everything we want to do. Um, which was still on route to, like, I don't, like... Yeah. But since she definitely doesn't consider it done, or, like, she's blown or anything like that. She's still, like, she wants to, she wants to blow, you know, she wants yeah. to get to um, But it's definitely, it's been a... I feel like that's... Uh, the music industry is a horrible and hectic place. Mm. Um, but it's... There's some gems, and definitely Sims is one of those gems. Thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate appreciate that. Like, you've definitely been like the best name I've got, and not the best, but like the name I've been most the name I've been most looking forward to getting on here and stuff, you know. And it's just it is genuinely like so cool to see someone from back home because like all my family's still back in Kenya and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, man, it's it's, it's good to see that, man. Thank you so much. Respect.